Today, we're going to be talking about avoiding high risk relapse situations during your reboot. Now, when you use the porn reboot system, the requirement is that you live an active above average life. And I know the whole living an above average life sometimes rubs some men the wrong way, but I want you to understand that the reason why I insist that my clients strive to be above average is because you already have something that is holding you back. Your out of control behavior has impacted some part of your life. And this is especially relevant to you if you consider yourself to be well put together or successful in any way. So we have different aspects of what we call reboot capital. We have physical reboot capital. We have mental or intellectual reboot capital. We have your social reboot capital, emotional reboot capital, spiritual reboot capital, and your mission and your purpose as it applies to your reboot capital. And all these are areas that have to be built up in abundance during your reboot so that you can have the resources to continue building up these areas. Now, there's some men who their social reboot capital, like they have a great support network, they have people who are there for them on a regular basis. Those men might also have like great mental or intellectual reboot capital or great physical reboot capital. That means like, you know, they get enough sleep, they take care of their body and so on, but they might struggle when it comes to emotional reboot capital, right? So they might not be comfortable sharing their emotions, like their fear or their anger or their loneliness or their sadness. So they hide their feelings or they might not have a mission or a purpose. Maybe they're doing well in some areas of their life and they're well put together, but they're just like, yeah, sure. I, I have my family, I have my job and my career, but I just, I'm not doing anything that makes me feel as if I am making a difference in the world. So these areas of your life have not been developed. And I personally and professionally do not see the point in a man rebooting and controlling this behavior only to go back to mediocrity, okay? So we want to push to be well above average in all these different areas of reboot capital. Now, what this means is that in order to kind of be above average, it means that you're going to quite naturally end up in what we would define as some high risk situations, right? <laughs> if you want to avoid high risk situations that would lead to a relapse, well, that's easy. Just, you know, live a super boring life like a monk, right? Like just go whatever they call it, hard mode, stay away from women, don't take risks, don't put yourself in social situations because you might get triggered. Don't go dating because a woman might do something unpredictable. Don't try to start a business because you might fail and that might cause you a lot of strong emotions. Don't get a job that is stressful, not in a bad way, but requires hard work and long hours because that might increase your stress and you don't know how to deal with your stress. That would be the easy way to do it, but that's not what we do here at Porn Reboot, right? So what I want to make clear is that it's less about avoiding those sort of situations, those sort of high risk situations, and it's more about identifying and having a plan for them. Again, when you go through the porn reboot system, we want you to be a man who lives your life in an above average way, but you do not fear a slip or a relapse. You want to be able to go for a party. You want to go to be able, if your friends invite you to a bachelor party, you want to be able to go to that, right? You want to be able to go on a date and have one or two drinks and you're okay. You know that you're not going to slip. You want to be able to live and enjoy life. You want to be able to crank out long hours on something you're passionate about and not worry about your frustration or stress leading to a slip, right? So, Again, like I said, it's not about avoiding, it's about facing it head on, having the right strategies and skills, and having a plan for all of this. So the first thing that you wanna do is, you wanna identify relationships which cause you stress, or which harm your reboot, or which pressure you to break certain boundaries. You also want to identify relationships that make you feel negative about yourself, all right? So let me repeat that. The first thing you want to do is identify relationships which cause you a lot of stress, which harm your reboots, which basically means that these are relationships where somebody interrupts things which are very important to your reboot. So things like your morning routine 
or you're in a relationship or there's some sort of relationship in your life where that person is not supportive of your reboots, you want to identify relationships where you're constantly being pressured to break boundaries like, hey, let's stay up late, let's have another drink, let's smoke some weed, let's go to the strip club, here's some images of women that I'm having sex with, bro, what do you think of this? Like, again, you gotta identify those, or those that make you feel negative, right? So it could be a family member that gets you down. Even your partner, they say something that constantly puts you in a negative state. And then the second thing you wanna do is you want to go in, and, and this is in terms of relationships. The reason why I'm bringing up relationships as it pertains to high-risk relapse situations is that Many of the highest risk relapse situations involve other people in one way or the other. It involves friends inviting you to something. It involves a woman that you might be sexually attracted to. It might involve a family situation or a family gathering, that sort of situation. So the next thing you want to do is you want to delete the numbers and the contacts, first of all, of people who are the most triggering. And by this, I mean people whom you have acted out with. So if you're in a committed relationship and there's somebody you just can't stay away from outside of your relationship and you keep visiting with that person, the first thing you've got to do is you've got to cut contact with them and delete their number. Now, I know you're thinking, yeah, JK, I've tried this before, but I always get their number. I always email them. Listen, just do it first of all. Start the process, okay? A lot of times it is the mindset that you begin it with that's more important than actually doing it. A lot of times when men cut off communication with somebody that they're acting out with, it's usually during the restoration stage. It's like you've acted out with that person, you feel a tremendous amount of shame and guilt, and then you promise yourself you're no longer going to act out. And in that emotional moment, you cut off contact with that person. You might think that that's super powerful because of all the emotions that I've involved. I'll tell you what is more powerful than that. Doing it logically when you don't wanna do it. Sitting down, and you have no urges for this person, you see no good reason to do it, but you actually sit down and you think about logically and rationally, not emotionally, why this is not good for you, what you want for your future, how this person is putting your reboot at risk, and then deleting their contact. Try that, because I guarantee you, you probably haven't done that before. All right, old email threads, pictures that you've been gathering. Some of this is part of what we call cleaning house within the porn reboot system. Unfollow all triggering accounts if you're on social media for whatever reason, let go of them. The other day, a brother in the group asked, he was like, hey, so there's this girl that I'm flirting with on Facebook. And he's like, is there a way, he's in our free group. He's like, is there a way to like, kind of like block her profile so I don't see her and I don't get triggered and you know just flirt with her and we were like dude just quit fucking around and completely block her okay like why are you playing these games with yourself so unfollow all the accounts which trigger you and the next thing you want to do is you want to start building up your reboot circle all right this is the first step when it comes to avoiding high-risk relapse situations what's your reboot circle your reboot circle is basically a group of individuals who you can reach out for for accountability for maintaining your boundaries, for talking about different situations pertaining to your reboot. And the reason we call it a reboot circle is simply because accountability usually doesn't work when you have one person as your accountability partner. Why? Because sometimes the person is not in the mood. Sometimes the person doesn't respond to you. Sometimes the person is just simply not available to talk to you. Sometimes the person just ghosts on you. And sometimes you're just not comfortable sharing that much with that person because you value the relationship more than you value or you value the prior relationship you had with this person more than you actually value your accountability relationship with them. So having a reboot circle allows you to have different people that you can share different aspects of your life with. So there might be some men that you can talk about, you know, like you're like, hey, man, I'm, you know, like I'm attracted to some other woman other than my wife or my partner you can have the conversation with that man knowing that the man is not going to judge you for that and he understands where you're coming from and he can support you in the right way you might have another person who you talk to about you know your attraction to other women outside of your relationship might not be the same person you want to talk to about 
maybe a weird fetish that you have when it comes to, or a fetish you consider to be weird when it comes to pornography, or maybe some traumatic event that happened to you. So you might wanna have that conversation with your coach, you might wanna have that conversation with your therapist, so that's another person. Now, when it comes to maybe some of the things you wanna do in the future and what your ideal life with your partner would be like, and some deeper issues, Again, you might not even wanna to speak to your therapist about that. If you're a religious person, you might just wanna have that conversation with your religious leader or your pastor, or your minister, or whomever that might be. And you might also have an accountability group where you talk more specifically about the type of pornography that you're trying to avoid and different boundaries. And what does this do? It simply allows you to share with different people, number one, without one person having all that information without you feeling like you're burdening that person because chances are that person is not a professional accountability partner and it keeps everybody clearly in their roles. But what happens is at the end of the day, you're releasing your guilt and shame in a way that doesn't create any issues between you and the people and the relationships that you already have existing with them. But the questions you've got to ask yourself, now this is easier to do obviously if you are a member of one of our groups. So if you are in the implementation program or if you are in the intensive program, this is not gonna be a big deal for you. You're like, yeah, I know how to do this, I already have a reboot circle. But if you are listening to this podcast and you are not in any of our programs, it's easier said than done. So here is a quick exercise for you to do, just some questions that you can ask yourself to get the ball rolling. The first thing is to write down, again, pen to paper, who will you reach out to when you experience strong urges? Make a list of people that you could reach out to. The second thing is you've got a plan. What are you gonna tell them? A lot of people start informal accountability relationships to protect them from high-risk relapse situations, but they don't know how to talk to that person about it because they don't know how to be assertive. So if you're comfortable enough with that person, here's an example of a way that you could state or a statement that you could make that's assertive, but that makes it very clear to that person what you're actually looking for. Once that person says, yeah, brother, I'm happy to be your accountability partner. I'm happy to help you if you're in a high risk situation. You're like, all right, brother, thank you so much for doing that. You know, when I have urges, what I need you to do is just one thing. Just remind me of why I am rebooting. Can I count on you for this? Again, when I have urges, I need you to just remind me of why I am rebooting. And then you must add, can I count on you for this? You must get their commitment. I found that this is a very simple and polite way even though it obligates them to help you, it lets them know that, hey, if they agree to this, this isn't just gonna be some casual thing, right? So if you just told them, hey, I would like you to remind me of why I'm rebooting whenever I have an urge, it doesn't even sound convincing coming out of your mouth. So they're just gonna be like, yeah, sure, I'll, I'll be happy to do that. But when you tell them, can I count on you for this? then you are making them obligated. And in turn, you realize, oh man, I'm really like getting this guy committed to this and making him obligate himself to this situation. So I have to follow through. When I experience urges, I have to stay accountable, right? And the next part of this exercise would be, again, this might already for some of you who have never had an accountability partner or have never taken an accountability relationship to the next level, this might sound a little bit daunting. So. The next part is ask yourself, is there someone that you'd actually, or rather if there's somebody who you, you would like to ask to be your accountability partner for high risk situations, write out pen to paper, what is getting in the way of this? Again, write out what is getting in the way of that. And finally, write out what would it take for you to be willing to actually ask them? So again, you list out all the things getting in the way. Oh, I think they're going to judge me. I don't want to obligate them. They're super busy. I'll feel like I'm just taking from them and not giving anything and so on and so forth. So again, write all of that down, first of all. And then for each of those things, ask yourself, well, what would it take for me to be willing to ask them? What would I have to do? And it's, gentlemen, it's very important to Again, put pen to paper and write these things down. 
I know like for the past couple of episodes, I've been emphasizing it. And that's because we've been working on some new modules within the Porn Reboot system. And I'm just starting to realize as I speak to more men in our program that just a lot of guys due to being able to understand things in their head, feel like they don't need to write it down. So if you're having like a conversation with your addict personality, a lot of guys say like, yeah, I was in my car or I was at home, I was in bed. And this part of me, I was having this conversation in my head and eventually I gave into it. And I let men know that your chances drastically increase of not slipping and of winning or of out, how would I say, out rationalizing that voice in your head when you put pen to paper. Why? Because you're putting in more effort than that voice is putting in. The voice is passive and it's working off your biochemistry and all the chemicals in your body. But once you put pen to paper, you are dissociating from it, first of all, and you're doing something physical. You can literally see the conversation. You're bringing the conversation out of your head onto a medium that you can control, which is paper or wherever you're typing it. So again, actually doing the exercises and putting pen to paper makes a huge difference. And so that's basically what I've shared with you today is just one way of avoiding high risk relapse situations by leveraging the power of the relationships that you have around you.